we all live at our parents' houses because it's the easiest thing to do if you're like touring for half the year. But it's hard to write a record when you're living at your parents' house. You're feeling like a little cooped up, I think. So I think a big challenge is balancing that and like knowing when to send it and then when to just be like, I gotta make some steady income so I can like, you know, buy groceries. Is it all about the same? in Dunwoody and I still live there now. It's like 30, 40 minutes outside of the city. I really liked pop music growing up and I still do. Like Demi Lovato was my hero and stuff like that. <laughs> and like any like female pop artist I really loved. I grew up around Atlanta, I moved around a little bit, but a lot of what I listened to growing up was like 80s Athens rock, so like R.E.M. B-52s, Love Tractor, Pylon. That's just what my dad played in his car on cassette tapes. We weren't really that aware that like Atlanta had really like a rock and roll scene. I feel like we're pretty disconnected from any scene. Yeah. Right? Because we went to a small Catholic school, so there wasn't really any talk of like bands or music or really anything within the scene at all. So that was a kind of a fun like discovery for us and I think it really changed us as people. We all went to the same high school. Yeah. But none of us really besides Grace and I were at We besties. didn't like hang out. We ever. didn't hang out. We would see Connor we would in the see hallway. Connor and, and like in the hallway and be like, oh my god, hey Connor. Like <laughs> while we were in a band and like playing shows with him. It was so strange. <laughs> Like there's like two types of drummers. There's like the really energetic, crazy ones, and there's the ones that are like super, super cool, chill. sitting in the pocket. I'm Connor. I play drums and sing a little bit sometimes. And I just sit in the back and try to, you know, <laughs> incorporate whatever I can into what I'm doing. And then Mateo was two grades above Maggie and I. And he was in high school with both of our siblings, but none of our siblings were friends. It was like just like a repeated thing. My name's Mateo. I play the keyboards primarily. He's kind of the wizard. He has a lot of knobs to turn and parts to play. And he's kind of like the auxiliary musician, just like playing so 12 things at once. <laughs> And then Ben is two grades below us in the same high school. But we all came, like me, Maggie, Connor, all came together at the same time. But then Mateo and Ben came at different times. But it all came out of the same high school, which was really weird and kind of funny. I'm Ben. I play the bass. I also contribute good energy, good vibes. When we're on the road, he kind of acts as the band doctor. Yeah. He has a lot of medical knowledge, even though he's like 20. So <laughs> that's Ben's role. Bass is where rhythm and melody and harmony meet really in the band. So I feel like it just suits me perfectly as a person. My vision of like the Atlanta music scene was I used to go to all these jams and it was like blues music and rock music at places like Blind Willie's and Smith's Old Bar. That was the scene to me. The first show I went to was at the Old Masquerade on uh, North Avenue. My dad took me to see the White Rabbits, and it was like a, a punk band, uh, and it was super fun. But that was the kind of the introduction for me to that Atlanta scene. In high school, I went to the Old Masquerade. I would start going there pretty regularly just for shows with friends. And I used to see Lunar Vacation all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day, before I played Lunar Vacation, so <laughs> and I would see them at like the Drunken Unicorn, and like to me that was kind of the Atlanta music indie scene. I couldn't understand how fascination worked. It all went up in the air. When we 
we started playing shows, it was because like I was just emailing every venue and I was like, we have one demo on SoundCloud. Can you please like have us open for anyone? And then kind of with that, we started just bringing along all of our friends from our high school. And then on like Wednesday nights or Friday nights, we would all go to the Drunk and Unicorn and like see local shows, which was really fun. I remember our first show, like our first legit show, we were opening for two other bands at the Old Masquerade that's now like a condo or something. We got like all of our friends to come and it was like, you know, 20 or 30 high schoolers that had never been to like an indie show. And I think that was really exciting because it's like, whoa, this just feels like a party. We started in high school, we were like 16. And then we went to college and then we toured during college. So like all those little life changes definitely affected the way that we wanted to make music. But I think like instrumentally, I feel like we really like texture. Like I think we kind of like the little details more than like trying to make like a sweeping big ballad or something. I think in the beginning, probably like most bands, we were trying to make parts that sounded like other bands we were listening to. Or now we're just trying to sound like ourselves. See you next Lyrically, I think, like, even if you listen to our older stuff, I mean, it just reminds me of high school because it is very dramatic and very emotional, which is good because I'm a very emotional and dramatic person. <laughs> but I think that when I was in high school, it helped me process a lot of things I was feeling and then basically make it into some kind of, like, crazy ballad. But it's kind of fun to like make music that way because it's kind of like a timestamp on how you're feeling, even if it's something that you look back on and are like, oh, I'm glad that happened or whatever. But I think now I'm trying to steer away from writing too much about really emotional, deep things that are negative. And I'm trying to now just write about my friends or I don't know, like the environment around me. In the beginning, like first three years, when we were playing together, it was drilled in our heads that we need to be like perfectly tight and have like such good technique and have like zero mess ups, which now we realize is just kind of like, there's no point in that. Something that was emphasized when we were making our record a lot, our producer Dan was like, there are so many times where he's like, play this part like you're just learning how to play guitar. Like just be like looser and messier and just I guess just to give it more character. Should we do two E's and, C, and then go back? And then and that's yeah, that's yeah. cool. I guess that's I think I saw your face on the TV. It's been some time since we last spoke. You're looking like me. We can plan really well together and we work well, like figuring out a schedule, what to do, but we do like, you know, taking breaks from that to just let loose a little bit. If you're just kind of like loose and already having a good time, it seems to be easier than if you're like really stressed about putting in a nine to five type day. Everyone's been really encouraging of each other to just try as many new things as possible. <laughs> I'm very excited about everybody playing together as a group. There's this new song that we've been playing live, and I've noticed that every show, I kind of do little things differently in the song. And like, I remember when I tracked that song, we had jammed on it that whole day, but in playing the same song, you'll find new things to do and feel correct. And so I feel like just being able to be together and play together, you're gonna all be able to play to each other better. I would say we had a breakthrough making the record when we decided 
to like start serving the song and not like our own individual parts. Yeah. And if that means like not having a guitar solo or not having keys or whatever, so I can accentuate the song. I think that really helped. Touring has had a lot to do with our sound changing. Like we're only like halfway through the year, we've already played like over 60 shows, I think. So just getting tighter as a group and really listening to people's individual little quirks. I think we're also comfortable with each other. Where like it's kind of fun to like snap back at someone, or it's like it almost feels like a. <laughs> it almost feels like a. Maybe that's just me and Mateo. It just feels yeah, like, it's a like big, oh, today you snap back at yeah, me, so you did Yeah, buy. it, it feels like a big, like a family it's a big road family trip. Family. Yeah, definitely yeah. like sibling yeah. vibe. It's very, it's nice. a very honest relationship. Yeah, you know, it's just very close and honest and really funny. I could be It was a journey to get there because we only really started feeling really good in like 2020 and I think that was probably just because like the pandemic hit and then we also were doing our record. That's the first time we ever worked on a big project together. It was like a huge learning opportunity for all of us and just to get closer as friends because we realized we weren't like that close. So it definitely was a process but now it feels really really good. Because we all became better friends, it kind of like, it showed in the music. Because we all understand each other really well and share a lot of things. And I think that's kind of like the key to making good music. I think we've really tried to learn how to act as a unit. And if someone is feeling super caffeinated and energized and they want to take the reins for the day, whether that's like, helping load out heavier stuff or doing a driving shift on tour. Really just working as one entity and for the common good of the band. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. That's good. <laughs>